Hello people, welcome to another edition of A Dose of Drew and Sunday Sharpenings. This Sunday we have the Chosera 3000. This is a fantastic polishing stone by the way. It is very splash and go, you get it up. I use the silicon carbide rust erasers, I use the fine on the 3000. Pretty much the 3000 alone. Um, these are really cool. It's a type of rubber, it's silicon carbide. Silicon carbide is harder than aluminum oxide. It's one of the hardest abrasives, uh, pretty much outside of CBN or diamond. So silicon carbide is a really good one. And it's up there with tungsten carbide and those guys. So it's, it's not up there with vanadium carbide uh, and that sort of stuff. I, it's a little bit below that. Tungsten carbide, vanadium carbide, titanium carbide. It's a little bit below that. But as far as general abrasives go, silicon carbide, um, it's harder than silicon oxide. It's harder than aluminum oxide. It's pretty solid. So it does a lot of cool stuff. It'll take on more steels than um, many. This is sticking to it. So that's pretty clean. All right. So this one I have had for a few years now. It was a really good choice. This is not my last polishing stone. Uh, but uh, I actually have a King S1 splash and go. I just almost never polish a knife up that high anymore. I don't use my kitchen knives um, that high of a polish. In fact, I've never polished this Messermeister up to 3000. The 1500 Shapton is as smooth as I normally have to go, but I really want to take another crack at this edge and may as well do the Chosera, of course, while we're at it. And this is a fantastic stone, but uh, I'll get into it and then we'll talk more about steels and the stone and all that. All right, so find the bevel. I like to be able to see it. I like to see when I'm getting close and then feel the flatness. It's about right there. Oh, yeah. to feel this bevel. Not quite. It's a little warm and dry in here today, so the stone seems thirsty. It is not a thirsty stone, this thing. It's just, it. the water dries, it does not soak in. There we go, getting some extra. It's just that little bit. I'm going to work up a nice book today. And I keep talking about SG2, so I want to actually both correct myself and some specifics and get it out there because it's sort of an interesting steel, to be perfectly honest. I keep saying it's like SG or, or like S35VN, and I should correct it. Its edge holding performance and like catcher tests and such is very similar. Oh, I cracked a scab. If anyone doesn't like blood, look away. Um, its edge performance and like catcher tests and such is similar. It's in the same class as S35VN and such. Um, its toughness rating is similar to S35VN, somewhere between S35VN and CPM 154. Um, so there's that, which is an interesting bit. It's a little bit tougher in most tests. Um, and it's been around for a while. It's also known as R2, I believe is the name. And I think actually R2 is the original name. And SG2 is a secondary, secondary either a license seller or something like that. It's someone else making the same steel under license, I believe. However, that works out in their contract. But it's someone else making the same steel. I got a pretty good burr, I think. Now I'm gonna stop up some of this bleeding here real quick while I'm at it. But so yeah, it's been around for quite a while now. Uh, and so it's it's been a high level 
crazy high level uh, steel, one of the top performing steels for at least 10, 15 years or more. But I want to talk about why it's not metallurgically. Oh, this thing's still bleeding. So I want to talk about why it's not metallurgically. To talk about what it's more metallurgically like, SG2 is like a marriage of CPM 154 and CPM D2, but got a, a little bit more. It's essentially CPM 154 with about 2% vanadium added to it. Um, so it's got a lot of moly carbs, or carbides, moly carbs, a lot of molybdenum carbides, just to be specific. So it's got a lot of molybdenum car carbides. feeling nice Ooh, that one felt good that was that was a nice little that one was smooth on the stone that time any sharpeners out there will know what I mean cleans up really nice you can wipe it dry I, I don't have a tank so this one's not going to get wiped just or, or not going to get washed off it's going to get wiped so we'll just have to deal with that why does this thing not stop bleeding we might have some blood in the picture today guys because I'm not going to restart the sharpening but I had a little Nick, not from a knife, from other stuff, quite honestly. Oh, still no burr. Ooh, that dug in a little bit. Look at that last little bit of curve there. Get some of this work in early. Nothing that's enough to worry me, so we're going to keep going. This is refining that 1500 Shapton Pro Edge. And since this does a lot more push cutting or light slicing, it's one of the few I will sharpen up to a Shapton 3000. Most everything else, actually, the 9... Uh, micron diamond and the 1500 Shapton are both a little bit polished for my tastes uh, again my favorite is my honestly favorite kitchen of all, knife of all time is this one but I hate soaking it for 25 minutes and letting it dry for three to six days and sometimes still not being dry um, it's just a, too much of a pain in my regular life to use with any regular basis. It really is. Um, so, I have been on the lookout for a replacement for it. And also, I've had the Chosera 600 for a while. And it's a thirsty stone. The King 6000 that's not even supposed to be a soaking stone is less thirsty than this stone. Um, so, I've been looking for a replacement for that. I may have found some. Just to uh, 
spoiler alert i may have found some i'm not going to tell you guys what they are um, but those should be coming soon and i will do a sharpening and review of those stones if and when they come in soon so those will be coming up too there's been requests for what i use for strops um i use diamond pastes generally i used to use um, bark river and its equivalents white green and black with black being the coarsest and white being about one micron There's still a little roughness to it, but I'm getting a burr. Might need a little more tip work. But I'll get a little bit on the hole. You don't have to go fast, and I'm not pushing real hard. Diamond stones definitely bring out a good habit in me, and that is not relying on pressure. Yeah, you wanna you wanna press hard. You do. You wanna add pressure to it, but in doing so, you don't wanna add too much. It'll almost always mess up your technique. It's better to do it in a spot than across the whole blade, unless you're on a rough stone and you are grinding a new bevel and you want, that's probably the only time I would say you want significant pressure because you can get that done and you want it all in one stroke. It's about even pressure. And the reason why people go fast is because it is far more about stroke number than stroke pressure. I feel like that tip still has a little bit to go. It was a problem spot before anyway. It was where a lot of the chips were. So I just want to make sure. See, it's leaving that incredible line there. A little bit of over sharpening maybe on my part, but Definitely feels better now. Do both sides. Start to start around to do both sides again. Right. I'm still getting used to doing this while straddling the tripod. So you guys, if I mess up my technique a little bit, go ahead and call me out. It's weird doing this. Actually raised a fairly nice burr pretty quick. That's a good sign. Just 
Just a little bit more on the tip. Swerve off, rewet it. Okay, go to the other side of the tripod. Heel. All right. Time to count down and roll that burr off and then strop it a little. I go by evens from 10. Check in. Just letting the process work. I might hit a spot here and there, especially when I'm in the higher numbers, just to try and make sure I get everything. Hope my face being close to the camera isn't catching too much breathing. Letting a little ASMR go in here. Uh, cuts really nice and fast, as you guys just saw. It. I had it in the first uh, few passes there, but I really wanted to get a new finish. So it took about 40 strokes per side, plus a little bit of piecework to get a really nice feel but there was a micro burr at um 30 or maybe it was 50 it was 30 and 20 um and then another 20 on each side and it just rolled a nice big burr on each of those 20 passes so after that first little bit of work it's just rolled it up nice um and so SG2 is like somewhere between S35VN and CPM154. It's, it's, it seems more based on CPM154 chemistry or 154CM, but it's powder metal, metallurgy too. Yeah. So it has a lot of good characteristics like uh, CPM154, like high hardness good toughness, good corrosion resistance, but it doesn't have, which CPM 154 doesn't have the um, edge retention of S35VN. Ooh. Ooh, knee did not like that. We'll move a little bit. <laughs> Getting too old for this. But 
So by adding 2% of vanadium, it's right at, with that level of chromium, it's right at the point where the vanadium is almost all in chromium carbides, not vanadium carbides. So there's a little bit, but it's right at that point. So it has really hard carbides, sort of like M390 has a lot of chromium carbides. Um, vanadium enriched chromium carbides to be more specific. Okay. So, which are nice and hard. D2 is all uh, with the level of chromium, it's, it's vanadium carbide that's just vanadium isn't that high. It has high vanadium chromium carbides, which are still very hard. They're not as hard as aluminum oxide, but they're really close. All right, we're coming down to the last little bit. So it perf with all those mo moly carbides, and then all those chromium enriched or vanadium enriched chromium carbides. It performs very well. Um, very close to S35 VN and edge retention and tough like S35 Vienna. It doesn't have the niobium and all that stuff, but it does have pretty good performance. It is first generation particle metallurgy, though they probably up to the processes and just don't say anything, but. Okay. Come to the last little bit here. You guys are watching those last strokes. That's just me keeping the pressure, basically the weight of the knife. And then to make sure the tip stays there, I put my fingertips on there so that it follows the right path. So I am just, I'm basically stropping it back and forth. In fact, it is about time to just stop now. There should be no burr whatsoever on there. It does not feel like it, but we'll do some stropping just to... Yes, I say stropping as I go edge on because there will be a diamond strop to this thing. It's probably a three micron. sounding like a good idea on the 3000 stone here. And getting so close. Oh, just working that edge. This thing is so nice too. The feedback on this stone is so fantastic. Like you can see it, you can hear it, and you can feel the feedback. It really is as good as everyone says. There's a reason this is a lot of people's favorite polishing stone, or even just keeping something sharp. If you've already sharpened it up to this level, um, running it on the stone just a little bit, like this thing cuts fast, polishes while it's at it. And it gives just tremendous feedback. It's splash and go, dries in a couple hours, at least where I'm at. You can wipe it off, clean it, wipe it off, and it'll dry in just a sh short period of time. It's a very, very, very good stone. And I have no real need after getting the stone to polish on the stone any higher. If, I, if I'm trying to make something go to a mirror polish, um, I can with this by going further. But as far as my own personal kitchen needs, I have maybe two knives that are both choppers or this one like this sort of like a slicer chopper with the Nakiri. 
and then a very curved one that is like a rocker chopper. <laughs> and so the, the polished edge does better on those. If you guys want to see that, throw it down in the comments. I'll keep doing sharpening videos as long as you guys want it. Um, but this is the 3000 Chosera. Absolutely fantastic stone. I don't know what I can say that hasn't been said about this stone already. Um, off the stone. No stropping. Well, unless you count the towel as a strop. But just to hear it. Very smooth. Can not only do curve, it can shave. It can probably, yeah, it can shave. Shave the paper. Just keep it off camera. Sorry about that, guys. But you got the ASMR, but it is. Just smooth as silk. Super good chopper. Great, great for push cuts. It has enough bite that tomatoes and stuff, it won't slide off um, at there. So uh, even something like a tomato or, or any other slick skinned round vegetable um, or fruit, it won't slide off. This is not like an apple chopper. That's really not what this is for. That's something more like what, like that big round knife uh, or large belly knife I was talking about would be. But you want to julienne stuff. You want to chop up. This is great for if it wasn't for the uh, Benchmade station knife, this would still be my onion knife for sure. It was so easy to control. It has such great edge retention. It is incredibly thin though. So even though it has good edge retention, this is at a high hardness and the edge is more fragile. I lose more edge to chipping, micro chipping, than I lose to any sort of uh, abrasive wear resist, uh, abrasive wear. This is almost entirely caused by uh, microchipping and such, especially on, on high polish. But that's also another reason I don't usually go over the, the 9 micron 1200 diamond or the 1500 Shapton Pro. Again, we'll see what, how that goes, but yeah, as far as the edge goes, that's go. That's cool. And what more can you say about the Chosera 3000? This is many people's favorite polishing stone. Um, it is everything everyone says. It cuts like a 3000, polishes like a 4000. So it's an interesting mix. It is incredibly responsive. It polishes, it cuts. It's not for making new edges, but you take, you can actually go from like the 300 King to the 3000 Chosera if you're willing to take the time to work up a burr. If you have a good edge on the 300, which sets your bevel, you can skip all the way up to a 3000. You just got to put in the work to grind that, those 50 micron things down um, about, you know, four or five microns at a time. <laughs> So it'll take you a little while, but you can do it. So it is one of those things where you could essentially go from one from a rough stone if you need, ever need to do it to just the polishing sharpening stone. It's a little high for that. You probably want to go with something more like the 1500 Shapton Pro for that, which is a high grit 1500. It's closer to a 1200 uh, than I think most 1500s. It's closer to the 9 micron diamond, which is a low... Uh, diamond count. For those who don't know, there's always a spread. Whenever something says it's, even the diamonds, it says nine microns or something like that, it's going to be nine microns plus or minus one micron. There's going to be 10 micron and eight micron stuff in there and stuff in between. Like there's a spread of what actual stuff is in there. And it can be pretty big. It's also why things that are considered the same grit have different 
characteristics. You can have two different stones with the same grit rating from the same company or even different companies. We all know different companies, but even in the same company, different lines. We'll just have different size grit particles and a, a slightly different formulation of how much polishing to grit it is. And that changes the stone a lot. So 12, I, I think a thousand is something like anything from 10 microns to 15 microns, right? So you can have stuff in there and call it a thousand. And you can have anything from like, what is, I think 1200 is like eight to 12 microns. So 9 micron 1200 is pretty, you know, it, it may even be 8 to 12. I think it's 8 to 12 microns, yeah. So a 9 micron 1200 is pretty fine for a 1200. But diamonds have such a consistent and rough cut, uh, a 9 micron. Uh, if you go higher than that, it feels rougher. So it's, it's, it's a trade-off. But anyway, that's just a little bit about grits, SG2 steel. The Chosera 3000 or Naniwa Pro 3000, if you don't have the base. I have one of the old ones where they were talking. I've back before, I was right around the time that they were talking about the cracking. I can tell you right now, I've had this stone for more than three years and never had a problem with cracking. In fact, if anything, I take my Sharp How Course in 1200 and I. Can ooh, there's it's cleaning cleaning off my stone. But yeah, right. It's pretty flat. It's the only place I get any any bit is on the ends. So the ends are probably starting to be just a little bit high after three years. I have to take a flattening plate or something like that to it and check. But it was the only place that I could break. <laughs> The diamond stone free from all the water, uh, the the surface adhesion was if I slid it up to the uh, corners. So there's just enough uh, amount of out of flatness after three years on this stone that um, a, a layer of water on there can be broken by the angle. A thin layer of water's uh, surface tension can be broken by that amount of, I don't know about broken, but weakened significantly. So there you go. That's how long it stays flat for, uh, let's see, it's 2024. No, five years. <laughs> so it's been about five years with this stone. My goodness, time flies. I got it just before the pandemic, five or six. 2018 to 2024, later this year. This fall, it'll be like six years. So there you go. Pretty good stone. Used it significantly. Have sharpened multiple knives. Don't sharpen pocket knives on it anymore. I have diamond stones for all my pocket knives. But kitchen knives, absolutely. It'll take on S35N. It'll take on SG2. Um, I don't know about MagnaCut, but I'd be interesting to try. It just has a lot of really good qualities. Makes a fantastic edge. And is an incredibly good investment. It's not cheap, but it is definitely worth the money. There you go. Shapton. Or, sorry, Shapton. Oh, uh, court. <laughs> <coughs> Let's try that again. Naniwa Chosera 3000 or Pro if you get it without the base. And what they call a new formulation is people talked about cracking. I've never had a problem with it. Not a bit. I, it took me dropping my king stone onto concrete for it to generate the cracks that it does. So there we go. I've never had a problem with it. If anyone else has, go ahead and sound off in the comments. I have had zero problem. You can see mine has zero cracks whatsoever. It's already almost dry. Um, yeah. Hard to beat this stone. Makes a great edge. You guys heard heard it. Um, and all the rest of the talk. This has been a long one as we go through. Again, more stuff coming. If you guys want to see diamond stones working, let me know. Uh, happy to do sharpings on that. And I will keep this going. This has been another Sunday sharpings with the Chosera 3000. Um, go ahead, take this video. Watch it twice. Comment as much as you like. Be mindful of side effects. Remember to like and subscribe. This has been your Dose of Drew. I am said Drew. You guys have a great rest of your night.